Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the web-based app Trello. You can find Trello at Trello.com. And Trello.com to sign up is free. It is an application for productivity and organization, making use of cards, boards, and teams. What makes Trello unique is that users can organize their information visually. That means then that they can clarify to both teams and those looking at their information exactly what they mean in real time. One of the benefits of Trello is that you can spontaneously create any team of any number and you can actually have varying teams to work on specific projects. And because Trello exists on both iOS and Android, that means that individuals can work in real time on their mobile device. Although the application is used by solopreneurs and individuals, it's also used by large corporations and teams within those large corporations. Now to get started with a free account, you can click the sign up button. But before that, we want to take a look at the pricing options. Going to the pricing options, you'll note that Trello has a free version and we'll primarily be working with that version in the course. However, there's also a business class level. One of the main differences between the paid version and the free version is that you get an extra level of organization and you can actually categorize your boards with collections and you'll find out more about what that means once the course begins. You'll also have integrations and integrations are called power-ups in Trello. Trello gives you unlimited power-ups in its paid version and only one power-up in the free version. And power-ups allow you to integrate Trello with applications such as Google Hangouts, MailChimp, Dropbox, Evernote, and others. Now it's important to note that the $9.95 pricing is available per month when it's paid annually. The actual month, if you are going to pay on a monthly basis, month to month, is going to be $12.50. And to get started, you'll need to write a name, email address, and password in order to create your new account. You can also sign up with your Google account, and this will actually make it easier for you to integrate applications such as Google Drive. So once you've created your name, email, and password, you can go ahead and create your new account and sign in. And once you're signed in, you'll have access to the dashboard and the interface, and you'll be ready to begin collaborating with Trello. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look around the menu and see what it is we have available to us. Now, going from right to left, you'll start with the avatar button. And if you already have your image in this area, then you'll see your customized image that you placed there. But if you haven't yet, and you click on this image, what you're going to find is you'll find that there is a menu that comes on the right side. It gives you access to your profile, which you can change. And this area actually repeats some of the menu items. But one of the things that you can do is you can customize this image so that when people see your name, they'll know and associate that with you. Now, when you click the profile button, you'll notice that you can actually change your username. You can also change your initials. You can write a bio in here, and you'll probably have about 30 to 35 characters that will be visible to those who are looking at your bio. So if you want your username and your initials to be different, you can write that in here. You can also change the profile image, and you can click this button, and that will give you access to a photo that will be on your hard drive. And you can also take a photo with your webcam. So once you've uploaded the photo or taken a photo with your webcam, you can then go back and save your profile. And then you'll have your new profile. So going back to complete this right side menu, you're going to notice that you can actually take a look at any cards that you have. And you'll be able to do that at a glance in this menu. There's also a link to change your settings. And we'll actually be looking at this settings link in a separate video. You have your help link, available shortcuts. You can actually change the language and you can log out from this menu. The area next to your profile avatar, you'll see that there is a link here that has a bell. This is going to be a notification area. When you have activity on your account, you'll be able to see the notation here in the notification area. And then you have an information button. And this is information specifically from Trello itself. When you're looking to create new content, you'll click this plus button. You can create your boards, your team, and a business team. 
We'll actually be doing that in other videos. Then moving all the way over to the left side, you'll be able to search your cards. So you'll be able to search for certain content inside of your boards and any boards that are associated with you. And you'll be able to write your search terms in this area. You'll be able to track the activity on your boards specifically. You'll be able to see any of your recent activity on boards and you'll be able to see a list of all of your personal boards. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually keep this menu open. It will stay on the left side and then give you access to all of your other content in this area. So now let's take a look at what an area would actually look like if you had multiple layers of content. And you'll notice that you have an interface here and you also have any of your searchable content in this dialog box looking for specific boards or in this search dialog box for specific content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to configure the settings. And we're gonna start the process by going to our avatar. Then we're gonna go and click the settings link. You're going to actually see some overlap between the settings links and some of the things that you have seen before in the menu, such as your name, initials, and bio, your avatar, password, email, and changing the language. And all of those are things that you can actually do from your profile menu. Now, one thing that you can do is you can add an email address just in case you need a recovery email address or you want to operate from another email address. And for in this case, we're going to go ahead and add in a second address. Trello is then going to send a confirmation email, and then you'll need to click that email to make your new email address active. You'll get the new email address in your inbox, then you'll need to click and confirm the email address. Once you've done that, you'll have a second email address. You can set one of those email addresses as your primary email address. Now, the reason that the primary email address is going to be important is because you're going to be getting emails depending on how frequently you set them from Trello. When you have a specific project, you're going to want to change this based on how frequently or how often you want to get emails. So, for example, if we click this link, you're going to be given some choices. You can determine that Trello will never send you emails. You can have them sent approximately one per hour or you can have them sent instantly as soon as they occur. So whichever really fits the project that you're working on, you're going to want to choose one. If you don't work on any particular projects, you can actually choose never until you are. Now the other thing that Trello will do to let you know that there's activity on your account is to allow you to have desktop notifications. You'll need to choose to allow this to happen inside of your browser once you click that link. If you don't want it to happen, all you'll need to do is to just click this X out. Trello has a colorblind friendly mode with more colorful icons, and then you'll come into the application section. Now, if you have given a particular application through PowerUps some access to your account, you can actually decide that that application is not going to have further activity with your account, and you can click the revoke button. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to come back and then reestablish it, but it'll just mean that currently you're not giving this application any access to your Trello account. Lastly, you'll be able to tell when and where you logged in. For example, if someone else is logging into your account, which is unlikely, you'll be able to tell by what IP address they're actually using. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now going to discuss power-ups inside of Trello. And it's likely that you are already using at least one different web application than Trello for productivity. And Trello will allow one productivity power up app when you are using the free version and then unlimited power ups when you are using the paid version. Now, if you want to know whether or not the app you're using is going to be directly used along with Trello, what you can do is you can go to the Trello power up page and you can actually search for the particular app that you already use. For example, maybe you use Evernote and you can find out how to connect Evernote to Trello. Now, in the event that your application doesn't directly tie to Trello, you can always use the connection application called Zapier, which will also connect Trello to several different applications, even if there's no direct connection. And the best way to find out which applications tie directly to Zapier 
is to use the search term Trello Zapier integrations, and then you'll typically get at least one search result. The top search result will have all of the integrations that tie to Zapier. A less robust connection is the IFTTT connection. And if you use the search term Trello IFTTT integrations, you'll also get a list of integrations where Trello will actually tie to other applications. And once you know which application you'd like to use to tie together with Trello, you'll want to make sure that the integration does what you need it to do and it will actually be helpful in terms of your productivity. In some cases, the integration will have certain things that may or may not be helpful in terms of what you're actually doing with the program and may not be worth your time to integrate. Now, in order to get started with a particular power-up, you'll need to go inside of an actual board. And then you'll see on this right side menu inside of the board, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click this area called power ups. Once you've done that, you'll want to find the power up that you actually want to enable, and then you'll click enable. Once you do that, then you'll want to click this gear icon, and then you'll need to authorize your account to be used with Trello. Trello will then ask you to link your Evernote account. You will then click continue, and then you will sign in to authorize. You'll give your application authorization. And then in each case, the note inside of Trello will tell you exactly how you can use the integration inside of Trello. Once you've done that, you are then ready to start using your integration inside of Trello. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss the basic organizing unit for Trello, and that is a card. Now, we are now inside of a Trello board, and what you'll notice is that there are lists inside of a board, and inside of those lists are actual cards. So in order to create a card, you will have to have a list within a board. So one of the things we're going to do now is to create a list, and we're going to create an organizing principle for that list. Once you have your organizing principle for your list, you're then going to click Save. Now that's actually going to give you the opportunity then to create a card. Now you are then going to click the Add a Card button. Now inside of the card, you're actually going to place the content that you're looking to organize. So in this particular case, if you're looking to organize one tip at a time, you're going to write in the tip and any other reference information. And once you've written in the content that you want to organize, you're then going to click Add. What you'll see then is that Trello will then open up the next card for you to begin writing again, again. Now, the other way to add a card within this list is to use this menu. And what we can do is we can click Add a Card. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to X out of the second card. And now we have our first card that we're going to begin to work with. Now, one of the things we want to do is to look on the inside of the card so that we can begin organizing. And what you'll notice is that we can create a lot more detail for this particular card. We can also allow for comment if we're going to collaborate with someone on this particular card. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some content here. Now, it's quite possible you may want to give the text some special emphasis. And there is formatting specific to Trello that you can find where this link says formatting help. And Trello has specific formatting that you can use in order to make some of your text stand out and other text normal for the sake of emphasis. What we're going to do now is we're going to save this activity. And we're going to close out and turn the card around. And what you'll notice is that the card still appears with our comment, but if the individual wants to click on this card, they'll be able to see the back side, and then they'll be able to see the additional information that we have placed there. Now, one important aspect to card organization is actually to use the due date function. And you'll notice that the fourth level down, we can actually apply a due date to any card that we have in our list. So in this particular case, if we were to outline a task, what we could do is we could actually place a due date or a date associated with this particular comment. And we can actually outline a date in the future. 
and then we can then click Save. And what will happen then is we'll then get a reminder in Trello that this particular note, there is some action due on it. Now, obviously, there's a considerable amount more that we can do with this basic organizing principle inside of Trello, and we will explore those in additional videos. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, Trello gives you the ability to label all of your cards according to a legend that you put together. So in order to look at that legend, what we're going to do is we're going to click inside of one of the cards, and then we're going to click Labels. And what you're going to notice is that you have colors which represent different labels that you designate. So what we're going to do is we're going to designate each of these colors as a different label, which again helps us to organize our content visually. For example, we can click this pencil and we can name this label according to a different level of categorization. Once we've named the particular color, we'll then click Save. We can then name all of our colors in a different way. We can create new labels once we've completed the ones that we have. Once we have all the labels that we are going to use, we can then begin to use the labels on a particular card. And just so that you'll know, these labels are going to be available throughout all of our boards. So we're going to be able to use these labels on any card inside of any list inside of this board that we're in right now. If we were to go and search another board available to us, we would find that these labels would not be available. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the labels that are going to be associated with this particular card. And we can do that by clicking on the label. And then we can click inside of the box. And whenever we actually make changes, our changes are automatically saved unless we do something with them otherwise. So once we X out of this particular card, or in other words, turn it around, we should see our labels available. And you'll notice then that the labels are color coded on top of the card, on top of our content. So you'll see now we've added an additional layer of organization inside of our list by giving our cards a label. Now going back to the inside of the card, it may be that we don't have a team yet that we want to associate with this particular list. However, we may want to write in some comments about our thought process or about some other extenuating factor that led us to create this card. We can place all the information that we think is relevant inside of this comment area. Now, there are several aspects to commenting on this card that we'll want to take note of. First is that we can actually be subscribed to updates. And this will be of particular interest to us when we are working with someone and they have the ability to comment on the card and about what we are talking about in this particular area. We also have the ability to attach something to the card. Now we can bring in attachments from our computer. We can bring in other attachments from Trello. We can bring in links from Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, and OneDrive or we can paste in a link from any site on the web. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to place in here a link from another site on the web. And then we can give that link a name and make it clickable. Once you have that written in, you'll click attach. Now inside of the comment area, if we are connected to another member, we have the ability to tag that member in our comment. We can do that in this link we can add in an emoji if we want to or we can add in another card so really the card is a holding place for any information on a particular topic that we want to be relevant or we want to have read when somebody's actually looking at this particular unit of information that we have created now once we have everything that we want there we're then going to click save now once that comment is then written we can then have another person or we can write in another comment in the comment area and continue to add to this particular card in terms of comments. And lastly, we can add in another card to a particular comment. We can add in cards from this particular list and board or we can add in an entire board. So we're going to do right now is we're just going to add in this card and say that it's closely related. We're going to X out of there. 
and then we're going to click save we have our second comment so once we have everything we want inside of the card we're then going to click this x and that's actually going to give us multiple icons on the front of the card for example we can note that we are watching this card we're going to get notifications we can look at a due date we can note that it has a description we can note that it has comments and we can note that it has at least one attachment so again cards are the basic building block of the organization point and you can add to the card extensively once you click into it or turn it to the other side okay so with that thanks and i will see you in another video welcome back now in this video we are going to start adding attachments to our cards now we're going to go inside of one of our boards we'll go back to the list that we are creating and we're going to click on this very first card and you'll notice that we have added one attachment and that attachment was actually a link we can add an attachment that is a document from our hard drive and all we have to do is to click this link a Trello will give you several choices you can actually attach something from Trello that's actually going to be a link something from Google Drive something from Dropbox box or OneDrive now all of these links are going to be direct links and it will not count toward any kind of limit anything you upload from your computer the limit on the size of the attachment is 10 megabytes so if you decide to upload something from your computer you'll click this link now you'll notice that we've attached three documents from our hard drive these documents are now downloadable by anyone who has access to this card and to link to the other resources the process is the same you'll click add an attachment for example you'll click Google Drive then you'll click allow you will then choose what you want to attach and click select and then the document will then be added to your card now you'll probably see that Trello will make the suggestion that you enable a power up however you do have access to this document through this link so you don't have to enable this Google Drive power up in order to use this document and that's going to be the same with any of the content that we actually place inside of this card okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video hello and welcome now in this video we are going to work inside of a card and we're actually going to create a checklist in order to do that we're just going to click inside of one of the cards and then we're going to click the checklist link we're going to name the checklist and then we're going to click add once we add that checklist then we can begin to add steps to complete the checklist and in order to do that we're just going to write inside of the dialog box but once you have written out each step what you can do is you can then convert one of your checklist items to a card you can do that by hovering over the actual link and then you can click convert to card you can also delete the task if you feel it's inappropriate so what we're going to do now is we're going to close out this dialog box and we're going to X out so we can turn the card around and take a look to determine what the checklist is going to look like from the other side and you'll see that any time that you have a checklist you'll have a checkbox and then you'll have the number of tasks completed and then the number of tasks left to be completed so in order to go in and actually work with the actual tasks that you are counting you're going to click inside of the link and then you're going to check off the tasks as you complete them and you'll notice that the completion bar will tell you how close you are to completing this particular task now again you can have a due date associated with this card so that when this task is completed or when all the tasks are completed you can consider the card to be complete according to the due date so we're going to continue to check off the boxes and now our box is fully complete and what we can do then is we can either hide the completed items or delete the entire checklist once the task has been complete you can go to the other side of the card you'll notice that the number of tasks completed reflects what we have already done now if you wanted to follow the activity 
on this particular card, in particular when these items were completed, you can always click the Show Details button. And then you'll be able to follow the activity and you'll be able to tell when these boxes were actually checked off at a particular time. We can then rehide those details once we've completed our view of them. And so now we're going to go back to the front and we have now completed our work with checklists. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now it's quite possible that the categorization that Trello gives you will not necessarily do everything for you for your system. And if that's the case, you'll want to be able to use Trello's custom fields. Now, in order to create custom fields, we're going to go inside of one of the cards. Now, in order to create a custom field, we're going to go inside of the board menu and we're going to use a Trello power up. We've already enabled the Evernote power note, so we're going to disable it. And then we're going to scroll up. We're going to find the Trello custom fields and we're going to click enable. Once we click Enable, then custom fields will be available inside of our cards. So we're going to close up our Power Ups menu. And we're going to go inside of one of our cards. And you'll notice here that instead of Evernote, you have custom fields available. And so we're going to click Create Custom Field. And then we're going to actually give that field a name. Once we give our custom field a name, we can choose the kind that we actually want. We can use text, a number, a checkbox, a date, or a dropdown. We are going to actually use the checkbox. And we can also choose to show this custom field on the front of the actual card. And so in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and save it and save it to the front of the card. We'll then click Save. So we now have our custom field, we'll then click save. And now what we want to do is we want to go to the front of the card. But before we go to the front of the card, we're going to enable the desk reminder field. And now we're going to click the X. And you'll see that our field is there on our card on the front face. So we can actually go back in and create another custom field. In this case, we're going to click create custom field. We're going to add a field. We're going to create a date related field. So we have our name. We're then going to call this a date field. We're also going to show it on the front of the card. We're going to click save. And now that we have our custom field, we're going to make sure that there's a date and a time in. Then we're going to click save. The date remind it and cancel is now available and going to be available on our front page. We're then going to click the X. You'll see then that that second custom field is now available on our card on the front of the face. So custom fields will allow you additional flexibility in creating the kind of fields that you want to use that will give your system the exact categorization that you want to have. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we are going to create cards and add information by sending email. And in order to start that process, we're going to go inside of one of our boards. We're then going to click Show Menu. That's going to bring us to this board menu, and we're going to click More. And then we're going to click Email to Board Settings. Once we click Email to Board Settings, what we can do is we can actually email ourselves the address that we're going to be able to use for the board in order to create email into cards. So we may want to do that first. We're going to click Email Me This Address. And then the address will then be sent to our address on file with Trello. And when we open up our email box, we can click into this email. And then we have an email that will tell us what email address we can use in order to create cards by sending an email to Trello. So now that we have this email address, we're going to copy this entire address. We're going to copy it. We're going to click Compose on our email. We're going to put the email address in the To field. 
Now we're going to want to take note of the next few steps. Now the subject of our email will become the card's title. So when we write in the subject, we know that this will be the title we see on the front of the card. Now the body of the card will become the card's description. So we'll write in this information knowing that it will be part of the card's description when we turn it over. If we want to add attachments to the email, those attachments will be part of our card. We still need to make sure that we are mindful of the 10 megabyte limit. And now that we have all of our pertinent information, we're going to click send. Now the card will then become part of our to-do list. So one thing that we can do is we can actually move this card. We can do that by clicking this pin. And then we can click the move command. Then we can actually choose the board and then we can actually choose the particular list. And then we can determine which position. And then we can click move. We can then begin the categorization process with this particular email. Now each card also has its own address and we can send comments to that card by email. For example, we can click into one particular card, we can click share and more, and then you'll find an email address for this particular card. We'll go ahead and copy this email address and we'll go back to our email sending program. We're going to write in the address, we're going to write in a subject. Once we have that information in, we'll then click send. What will happen in real time in a few minutes is you'll see then that there's the comment icon on this particular card where we had the address. If we click inside of that card, you'll notice that we have our comment, it has a title, and it has our verbiage in there. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to track the activity that we have generated either on boards or on cards or in our profile. And if we start with our profile, we can go to click our avatar and then we can click on the profile link. And then if you go to the profile tab, you'll see all of the activity that you have been generating on your profile. And this is regardless of what board you use, and this is regardless of what cards you're using. As you can see here, there is a card from the welcome board, as well as a card from Thomas Duncan 1. Now, each of the boards also has its own activity tracker. So, for example, we can click inside of this board, and we can see all of the activity that has occurred inside of the go back to Trello. We can go inside of this board and then we can actually look in the menu and then we'll be able to track all of the activity inside of this board. And again, this is going to be specific to the board that we're in. You can notice that there is no activity associated with the welcome board. Now, each of the individual cards also has its own activity tracker. So if we go inside of this card and we click show details, we'll be able to see the activity associated with this card. We can then rehide the details and then we can turn the card over again. So Trello gives you the opportunity to track all of the activity on a particular board, card, and profile. And this can be especially helpful when you have individuals that you are sharing boards and cards with. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to go through the process of creating a new board. Remember that a board is one of the organizing principles of Trello, along with a card and a list. So to start creating a new board, we're going to click this link on your dashboard. And we're going to give this board a name. Now the default setting is for the board to be private. That means that individuals outside of those use invite will not be able to see the board. So we're going to leave the default and we're going to click create. One of the first 
levels of customization that we can actually engage in is to change the background. And we can use specific colors or we can use photos. In this particular case, we're going to actually use a color. We will now go to the more settings. And then we'll go into the board settings. Now, one of the levels of customization that we have, we can choose to have card covers displaying images. We can disable or we can enable. Now, the rest of these permissions actually are relevant only if we have a team. And we'll be talking about that in another video. So we're going to go back outside of the settings. And if you recall, labels are board specific. So we can actually create new labels for our new board. So once you've created labels for this particular board, if you are going to create them, you can then go back to the board menu. Now collections are another level of organization. You can actually place boards together that are alike in some way. Now this is going to be part of an upgraded Trello account. So for this case, we're actually going to skip adding this board to a particular collection. We can choose to watch the activity on this board by email. And we can do that by clicking the watch button that'll give us, that'll give us emails of all of the activities. And then we can actually copy this board into another or export the content. Now, if we want to give someone access to the board, they need to already have been added as a team member and if they have we can actually give them the link to this board or you can use it as a way to provide convenient access to it now because we are using the free account we can determine which power up we're actually going to use in this particular case we're going to use the custom fields board and enable it and remember if we want to enable a second board we are going to have to have a business class account However, we can safely use one power up on our board with the free account. So we can now go back to the board menu and we've now completed our board setup. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to create teams and attach those teams to the activity on our Trello boards. So the first thing they were going to need to do is go to this plus button at the very top of our Trello menu. And then we're going to click create team. We're going to give our team a name. And we're going to write in our own description. And of course, this is optional. You don't have to write one in. Once you do that, you can then click create. This will give you a team board and you can customize your profile. So for example, if you want to write in a website, you can actually do that. And if you want to change your team's avatar, you can change it also. And once you've completed that, you can then begin to add team members. If you click the members button, you can then begin to add members by their email address or by their name. Once you select individual, you can then click add. Now there is a settings link you'll see here. The only thing that will be available in the settings link if you have the free account will be the team visibility. And as long as you're going to have your team visibility limited to those who are going to be part of the group, you can actually leave the default setting. Now the team settings will allow you to create a new board specifically for your team. But it could be that you already have a board that you want to assign and give access to the new team that you just created. And if that's the case, we're going to go to the board that we want to add. We're then going to click this link that says personal. And then we're going to add this board to a team. We can choose to make the board visible to the team and it will allow any team member to join the board. So as long as they become part of the team where we invite them, they're going to be able to join this board also we're going to click add and now all of the activity that will be created in the future will be visible to the team 
Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now that we have created a team and created a board for that team, we're now going to apply the checklist concept to our team activity. Now you are going to need to add a list and that list can be a specific task or a specific project. So we're going to add in a list here. When we do that, we're going to click save. We're then going to add a card. And we're going to call this card a specific activity. Once we have our step, we're going to click add. If we have to add in another step, we're going to do that. And so now we can go inside of the individual cards and we can outline a plan to complete the task. So we're going to write in a description and save it. And then we're going to start a checklist of activities that must be completed. And we're going to call this checklist something relevant to the project. Once we do that, we're going to click Add. And then we're going to write in the steps that it's going to take to complete that we want checked off by the various individuals on our team. So now that all the tasks have been assigned and written out, we can now set a due date for this project step to be completed. And we can do that by adding a due date. We can now label this project step. And we are already tracking the activity for the entire board. However, anyone else that joins the project, they can track the activity by clicking the watch button. So assuming that two tasks have been completed, we can check off those tasks and we can write in a comment to that effect. And then the comment can be saved. If we are working with a specific document, we can then attach the document to the actual project. Once we add the document, we can actually comment on the document. And we're going to add that comment. And so now you can see that there is a trail of activity. There is a dated record of this activity step. And there is tracking of the progress. So the team gives new meaning to how you're going to use checklists inside of Trello. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you begin working in Teams, you may want to start importing data into Trello. And there is no direct integration to do a standard import. Now, you can gather data from a spreadsheet and place it inside of Trello. We're going to show you how to do that right now. Assuming that we wanted to import some data from this spreadsheet. And if we're going to import data into Trello, we are going to need to get one column of data at a time. So once we do that, we're going to copy this data. We're going to head back to Trello. When we come to our list, we're going to click Add a Card. And then we're going to paste the data inside of Trello. And what we're going to do is we're going to click the Add button. And what you're going to notice is that Trello is going to give us a message and ask us if we want to create four cards or if we want to create just one card. We can choose to create four cards from the data. And you'll see that it will line up as if it were four different cards. We can do the same thing with checklist items. And we can add the data in. And we click the Add button you're going to see that it will turn into four different checklist items. Now we can also import data into Trello specifically from a Google Sheet, which is a Google spreadsheet, using the productivity app Zapier. And we can set up the integration in Zapier when a spreadsheet row is added. And we can save and continue in Zapier. We can choose a spreadsheet in our Google Sheets account we can identify the specific spreadsheet to Zapier and then click continue. Then once we verify that Google Sheets is working, we can then go to Trello. 
And we can choose to create a new list on a specific board. Zapier will identify the available boards for us. And then we can choose the column that we want to bring over. And then we can click continue. We'll then send the test to Trello. Once we've verified that the test will work, we can then click finish. We can then turn our zap on. And then we can run the data import. And then you'll see that our import created the new list as we requested. So again, you can import data into Trello, given some limitations, using Google Sheets, as long as your data is set up in columns. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to take a look at the direct integrations into the card system inside of Trello. If we go inside of one of our cards, we can actually attach files and documents directly from within certain applications. And if we click the attachment button, we'll see what those applications are. Now the first is actually Trello itself. So if we click Trello, you'll note that we can add a card or a board. If we add a card, we can click the card and you'll be able to see that card visually inside of the card area. And of course, that attachment is going to be clickable. We can add other Trello attachments. For example, we can add an entire board. And then that board will also be clickable inside of our card area. We can attach items from our computer, which we discussed in a previous video, as well as Google Drive. But there are three other applications that we can direct link to. One is Dropbox. And if we click Dropbox, you'll note that we have to sign in to Dropbox in order to get access to our document files. So once we direct connected to our Dropbox, we can then select the file that we want to work with. And in this case, we're going to work with this file and click choose. And then that's going to give us access to this document through Dropbox. Now, there is no special functionality with this Dropbox document. It will give those who are going to be on our team access to be able to download this document by clicking this link. We can do the same thing with box.com and once you're in box.com you can have the same kind of connection you can actually select the file that you want to give access to and then you can click choose that'll make that file available inside of Trello you can do the same thing inside of Microsoft OneDrive you can click attachment and then click OneDrive and the links to those files will be added in this attachment area and directly downloadable from these links. Now to note, these are not the same as the power-ups, which give you more functionality, but they do give you direct access to your documents that you're storing on cloud storage. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we want to discuss something different about the Google Drive integration. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at the Google Drive Power Up. So we're going to look at the menu for the board that we're in, and then we're going to enable the Google Drive Power Up. And when you do this, you may have to connect your Google Drive through your Google account if you do, then you'll need to go through the steps to do that. Now, we'll need to configure Google Drive, and we do that through this gear. Once you've done that, you'll close up the Power Ups menu. Now, the Google Drive integration does allow you to access all of your Google Drive files from your card, but that's not the application that we want to focus on. When you click Google Drive at the top right of your Trello board, you're going to see a link that says create slides presentation. 
and when we create slide presentation, what's going to happen is Google Drive is going to open up a slide presentation, but it's going to use all of the content from your Trello board. So that means that if you structure all of your Trello content in a way that you want it to appear in a slide, you can present or train with the content based on these particular lists. So for example, if we were to click present slides, what will happen is Google will gather the content and then we're going to click open presentation. Your Google Drive will then open up all of the card content into a presentation. Of course, you can change the theme and then rearrange the content. But basically, as you see card one in this first position, it's the same card one that is first in this slide presentation. So this feature will allow you to take any board with all of the list available and present it in a Google slide presentation. That means that you can take the content, you can train with it, or you can train someone or a group of people with the tasks that need to be done in a particular list. And once again, we've enabled this in one board that doesn't have any other power ups available because we're using the free account. If you want to have more than one power up in operation on a particular board, you will need one of the business class Trello accounts to do that. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about storing documents and tracking progress. Now, you'll notice that in this video, we have created a brand new board called Documents for a Proposal. And you'll notice that this board has four lists. PDF files, Word files, PowerPoint files, and videos. Now, Trello is not necessarily made for uploading documents for download. However, there is no limit on the number of documents that you can upload as long as they are under the 10 megabyte storage limit per document. That means then that as a means of organizing documents for use by a team or even as an individual, you can upload and store documents in a card within a list or board. So you'll notice that we have uploaded a number of documents to this particular board. For example, you'll see that there are 19 PDFs. You'll see that there are 30 Word documents. And you'll see that there's one PowerPoint presentation file as well as 11 additional MP3 files. The advantage of this is that the search feature will actually look for the documents by name. For example, one of the documents is named Get More Communication. We type that phrase into the search and then we can find out where that document is on a particular card. And we can track our searches. Now, if we want to take advantage of save searches, which would help us in the storage and categorization system, we would need one of the business class Trello accounts in order to do that. So if we click save this search, what you're going to see is that you'll need to have either Trello Gold for an individual or one of the business class accounts for your team to be able to use the save searches on the Trello board. Again, typically you'd want to do storage in a location such as Google Drive or OneDrive or Box, but you can, on a limited basis, upload documents depending on your account status to Trello. 10 megabytes per upload if you have the free version and 250 megabytes per upload if you have the business class Trello account. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are now looking at the comment area inside of a card in a team related board. And as you know, all discussion activity in Trello happens at the card level. So anything that happens, you want the people who are on your team to see the activity and then take part in any discussion. This is going to be especially true when progress depends on files that you have uploaded. But there are going to be a few things that you're going to need to do to make sure that the possibility for discussion takes place. First, you'll want to go into your profile area and then you'll want to go into your profile settings. You'll want to make sure that your notifications at minimum happen as often as possible 
so that you'll get the notification and you can decide on when you want to answer the discussion. You'll also want to require any team members to have this notification feature enabled in their account. One of the other things you can do is to go inside of your board menu and you can grab the link that is available and you can post it where your other team members are actually going to see it. If your other team members are using a website or internet, you will be able to use this link and they'll be able to access the board if they have access to the content through the Trello team invitation. You can also share at the card level. By going into the card and clicking share and more, you're going to notice that there is an embed here. And we can actually embed this code someplace where our team is going to be able to see it. In fact, we can paste the code inside of a WordPress post or page and publish that page. And then team members would have clickable access to that particular card through a specific website. What you are attempting to do with your activity, as well as making the cards and boards available, is to encourage discussion by making sure team members are notified of all relevant action and conversation. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, one of the key aspects of being able to stay in touch with everyone who is on your team is to be able to access your mobile device and to access Trello on it. So what you will need to do is to make sure that you have Trello enabled on your mobile device and you can do that by going to either the App Store if you are an iOS user or the Play Store if you are a Google Android user. You will search for the app and then you'll go to your particular App Store. Once you see the Trello app you will need to get it onto your mobile device. Once you have the app downloaded you'll then want to click open. You'll need to then determine whether or not you want to have Trello send you notifications. If you are working on a particular project, you can. If you are just working in general, then you do not have to have Trello to send you applications on your mobile device. Once you have the app on your mobile device, you will then have access to all of the board and activity just as you have it on your desktop. In order to access a particular card, all you'll need to do is to press on top of the area and it will expand into the card and all of the contents. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.